بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد ما يدي برضو سيستس الحمد لله uh, we have been talking about the seerah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and the formation of the uh, of the ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم especially in Medina where he created this new um, basis of bonding which was on the basis of faith instead of on the basis of uh, family uh, and tribal uh, lineage and i mentioned to you the story one of the stories uh, which is the story of uh, uh, the brotherhood of uh, saad bin rabia and abdul rahman ibn auf radiyallahu anhum and uh, what happened with them let me tell you another one very beautiful one rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, formed the partnership between salman al farsi radiyallahu anhu and abu darda al ansari radiyallahu anhu so one is a salman al farsi radiyallahu anhu was persian um, he was a non arab speaker i mean he, he knew arabic obviously but you know that was not his mother tongue his mother tongue was farsi and uh, he's called farisi that's uh, we say farsi is not farsi is farisi so it's uh, somebody from faris and faris was the name of persia so salman al farisi al farisi so he was the salman of persia uh, on top of that he was a slave it was only later that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam um <clears throat> helped him to uh, manumit himself to buy his freedom from his um from his slave master he was a slave of uh, one of the jews in uh, madina so he rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam takes this man who is a uh, looking at it from the tribal and uh, you know blood uh, uh, lineage concept rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam takes this man who is a foreigner so he doesn't even come into the in, into the uh, into the picture as far as uh, arab bloodlines are concerned secondly he is a slave and he forms him and makes him a partner he makes him a brother of abu darda al ansari who is one of the uh, big names in the ansar of uh, madina so arab you know one of the leaders what happens with that they become as i said they become like brothers they become much more than brothers because these people were they loved each other much more than we can imagine in our world today right very very i mean their love for one another is legendary to uh, to say the least now just to give you a, a picture of how this thing um, uh, you know what what is meant by this closeness uh imagine put yourself in this place i mean i i cannot even i have a, i have a brother i love him very much but there's no way that i would uh, you know uh, speak to my brother <coughs> in the way that sarwar al farsi radhiyallahu <coughs> spoke to abu darda al ansari uh, radhiyallahu anhu because we have changed so much we have um, you know our, our values and our uh, our uh, akhlaq and our do's and don'ts as far as dealing with people are concerned are so far removed from the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i'm not talking about halal haram this is nothing to do with halal haram this is the issue of um, of of uh, you know building brotherhood or being together and so on and so forth now saman al farsi radhiyallahu anhu um one day comes home and uh, he finds the wife of abu darda umma darda radhiyallahu anha he finds her uh in a disabled condition uh disabled state you know her maybe her hair was not combed or something and this is before the the ayat of uh, of hijab and parda and so on came so um he saw maybe maybe her clothes were not uh, you know uh, the best and what not so anyway he, when he came home uh because he is the brother of abudarta he is living in the same house so he, as he comes home he finds his his uh, brother's wife in this state so he she doesn't look well i mean she doesn't look happy she looks 
kind of, you know, unhappy to look at her face and so on. So he asked, he says, what happened? I mean, what's wrong with you? What's happened? Are you, are you not well or are you sick or something? She says, no, 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 I am not, uh, I'm not sick or anything. I'm fine. Um, so he says, then why are you like this? I mean, you're, you, 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 you know, you look like uh, you haven't taken care of yourself. You don't look, you don't look like you have, uh, you know, you get up in the morning, you do things and so on. And it doesn't look like you've done any of that. She said, there is no point in me taking care of myself and looking good and so on because your brother is not interested in me anymore. So Salman al-Farsi gets a shock. He says, what do you mean? He says, my brother is not interested. He says, no, she says, no he's not interested in me anymore. Um, I don't see him at all. I mean, all day, uh, you know, he's at work and so on. And then um, he comes home and uh, he is fasting. He fasts every day and he's out uh, at work and so on all day. And then uh, when he comes home uh, in, the, in the evening, uh, he breaks his fast and so on. And then all night he prays. So he's standing in Salah all night and uh, he has no time for me. So what's the point in me, uh, you know, dressing up and, and so on and so forth. So Salman al-Farsi who uh, heard this, he said, okay, let me deal with this. So that day, Abu Darda al-Ansari came home um, around midday and Salman al-Farsi was there. So Abu Darda al said to him, uh, will you eat? He said, yes, of course. So he brought food and he put food before him. So Salman Farsi said, come sit, eat with me. Abu Darda said, no, no, I am fasting. Salman Farsi said, no, you are not fasting. Today is not, it, it is, this is not Ramadan. Today this is not a fard fast. And even if you have a nafil fast, break it. Right? Break the nafil fast. Come and sit here with me and eat with me. Abu Darda said, this is Radhe He said, no, I am sorry, I, I will not. He said, no, sit here. If you, if you don't eat with me, I will not eat. So now he put him in a spot because he is his host, he's his guest, uh, Salman Farsi is the guest and he's put him in a spot. So Abu Dharda with great reluctance and you know, obviously he must have been irritated, he must have been angry, he sat down, he broke his fast, he ate with Salman Farsi Some time passed, now time uh, in the night to sleep. So you know, the, the way these houses and so on, a, it's like a big house. Maybe there was one room at the back or something where uh, the husband and wife would probably be secluded. But otherwise, it was a, pub, a public sort of life. People sat and ate and so on. I mean, we, we, we lived in, in our time when I was growing up. This is how we also lived in Anbela, big houses. But, you know, the, the, the uh, life of the house, uh, this whole concept of a drawing room, living room, uh, this room, that room is a, is a very Western concept. As, we, as far as our Eastern ways of living in the Middle East and in, in, uh, uh, you know, the, in, in the uh, subcontinent and so on, uh, is public, uh, very, very communal living. People, the whole family live together. So uh, at the time of uh, you know, breakfast or I mean, uh, food time, uh, meal times, uh, they would bring a sufra, they would bring a dastarkhan, they would spread it on the carpet. Uh, food will be brought, it puts, it's put there, we don't have, you know, uh, courses, first course, second course, no, whatever is to be eaten is put there and uh, people all eat together. Among the Afghans, among the Arabs, they had the custom of eating from the same plate. So they had these big plates, big round plates like, like trays and food would be put in that and people sat around it and they ate from uh, this tray and so on. And then the whole thing would be wrapped up and taken away. And uh, you people would sit and chat there, they would drink tea there uh, in the same place. And then, uh, you know, you, you would pray there. If, so if, if, you didn't, if, if, there was, if the masjid was not close by, if you were praying at home, you prayed in the same place. And uh, then in the night to sleep, uh, you just pulled a pillow and you lay down and you slept. So this was the custom. So anyway, when the time in the night, time to sleep came, uh, Salman al-Farsi lay down and he saw Abu Darda standing up. He said, what happened to you? Uh, why are you not sleeping? He said, I am going to pray. I am going to, you know, Qiyam al -Lair. He said, no, 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 sorry, this is not time for Qiyam al Sleep now. Uh, Qiyam al is in the third part of the night. He said, no, I pray all, all night. He said, no, please sit, sleep. Come here and lie down. Uh, Abu Darda thought, you know, this is oppression. What is this? So anyway, Still, he's being nice, he's being polite to his guest, to his brother, and uh, he doesn't want to offend his brother, so he says, okay, I'll come. So he, ca he comes and he lies down. Uh, he waits until he thinks that Salman al-Farsi has gone to sleep, and then quietly he tries to get up. Salman al-Farsi says, where are you going? He said, what is this? He said, I, I'm going to pray. Tahajus. He said, it's not time for that sleep. 
Now this happens a couple of times uh, and then time for Tahajjud, last third of the night, um, Salman Farsi himself gets up <coughs> and Abu Dhabi also gets up. They pray Tahajjud and they go to the Masjid for Salatul Fajr with Rasulullah Now Rasulullah it was his practice that after Salatul Fajr he would turn around and he would sit and he would um, he would he would give some khatira, he would remind people about something, uh, he, anything he needed to say and so on. And he would also ask people, uh, does anybody have a question? Uh, did anyone see a dream? And if someone saw a dream and if, there, if it was a dream that was to be interpreted, Rasulullah would interpret the dream. And uh, if someone had a question or something, uh, you know, he would answer those questions. So that day when he turned around, he said, does somebody have something? Abu Dhar said, Ya Rasulullah, I have a complaint. Abu Dhar said about who? He said about my brother Salman Farsi. And Salman Farsi is there. This is not happening behind his back. He's, he's right there. So Rasulullah said, uh, So what is the complaint? So Abu Dhar who then narrated the whole story. He, he was, obviously, he was upset. So um, he said, You know, this is. Uh, uh, this is what my brother is doing, um, and uh, so on and so on. So Abu Darda al Ansari uh, uh, told the whole story to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, So what did your brother tell you? Did he just tell you to stop and so on? Or did he give an explanation? I and mean, why was he stopping you? Why was he telling you to break your fast? And so on. So did he give you an explanation? Uh, Abu Dhar said, yes, he gave me an explanation. And uh, he said, what's that? Um, he said, my brother says that yourself and your body has a right on you, your wife has a right on you, your rub has a right on you, so fulfill everyone's rights. Right? He said, Inna li nafsika alayka haqqa wa inna li ahlika alayka haqqa wa inna li rabbika alayka haqqa fa'ati kulla dhi haqqin haqqa so he said yourself and your body has a right on you you yourself have a right on yourself your wife has a right on you your rabb has a right on you so fulfill everyone's rights meaning don't take from the right of one to give to the other rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sadaqa salman he said what salman said to you is correct now see also the beautiful um, way of Rasulullah where two brothers, two of his beloved Sahaba, his companions, they have a disagreement and the, dis and the disagreement is on a religious matter. It's a matter of deen. It's a matter of the practice of Islam. It's not a small thing. It's a big thing. It's also a matter where apparently one of the brothers is uh, apparently infringing on the privacy and the right of the other brother. How does Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi how does he handle it? He listens to the first person, the complainant, and then he listens to him completely. Then he says, what did the brother say? And all of this is happening in the presence of the other person. So the other person has a right to, uh, you know, to interject, to contradict and so on if there is a need. And then he said, okay, so this is what happened. And then he gives his ruling. So this is the, also a, <coughs> Uh, a lesson for us in how to uh, arbitrate and um, how to conciliate between uh, our brother, between two people who are, may have a disagreement on something. Now, what happened thereafter? What happened thereafter was that Abu Dhar who followed the advice of Salman al Farsi who completely and his issue with his wife and so on and so forth was resolved. Right, so he didn't. He didn't carry this grudge, he didn't say, oh, what you know, this happened, that happened, no. He listened to the advice and he took it forward. Um, now, <clears throat> the Ansar, then, when Rasulullah formed these uh, partnerships, the Ansar were the people of Medina, so I mean, they owned property there, all the palm groves, all the date palm orchards belonged to them, the land belonged to them, and so on and so forth. The Muhajirin were refugees, they were 
poor people who had come, they were not poor in the sense of, you know, they, they were not always, they, had, they hadn't always been poor, but all their wealth was gone. It was left back and uh, later on, we will see in history, they never got it back. Uh, the, uh, the Quraysh, they confiscated it, they stole it and uh, that's how it remained. So when they came to Madinah, they were literally, uh, as I keep saying all the time, they were literally refugees. They were not uh, immigrants as in the sense that we understand today when people migrate. Um, they were to, today they, are, they were immigrants like, for example, the refugees that we find in different countries who, come, who, who may have been people of uh, material wealth in their own countries, but when they come to uh, whichever country they come to, they come as completely uh, destitute without anything. So now what, what, what did the Ansar do? These are the people of Madina, the people of property, people of wealth, uh, who Rasulullah has paired off with uh, one to one, one Ansari to one Muhajir and made them into brothers. He's creating a new community which is based on faith, not on uh, blood or tribal lineage. The Ansar came to Rasulullah they said, Ya Rasulullah, please split our properties, our palm groves, groves between the Muhajirun and us. They said, here is the property, you please split it, give half to the people, the Muhajirun uh, who came. Rasulullah refused. He said, I will not do it. So they said, then let the Muhajirun work in the farms and we will split the crop with them. So Rasulullah agreed. He said, okay, that's up to you. If you want to employ them, employ them and you can do that. Now, what actually happened was the Muhajirun, the, the, the Ansar, uh, having got this agreement that the Muhajirin are going to work in their farms and uh, they will split the crop with them. So they are going to work in the farm and they are going to get paid by, uh, in term, in, 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 uh, by means of the crop. So half the crop goes to them. Then what happened was that the Ansar, the farm owners, they did a lot of work or most of the work and then come harvest time, they still split the crop 50-50. Right? What was the original agreement? Original agreement was, I am the landowner. This person who is the Muhajir, who is the, uh, the refugee, who is the immigrant uh, from uh, Makkah or wherever, who, come, who is now my brother, uh, I am the landowner, I, am, I own the orchard, this brother of mine is going to work in the orchard, I will not be working, he will work in the orchard and in recognition for his work, compensation for his work, harvest time, I will give him half the harvest. This was the agreement. What did they actually do? What they actually did was, I am the landowner, it's my orchard, um, I get my brother to come, so okay, please come work in my orchard my Muhajir brother, my refugee brother. But along with him, I also work like I always used to work and I work and I do most of the work because I know the work better than he does. He's a new guy. I know I'm, I'm expert in this thing. I do most of the work and then come harvest time, I still give him half. Right? I still give half. Now, this created a problem with the Muhajirin, with the people who are receiving this money. They came to Rasulullah they said, Ya Rasulullah we have never seen people like this. We have never seen people like this. They comfort us when they are poor and they are generous when they are well off. They work in their farms and then they still split the harvest with us. We are afraid that they will take all the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave us with nothing. Amazing. Today, when we think about people like this in terms of dealings and so on, you know, it, it beats me. I mean, literally, I cannot, I cannot sort of figure out how uh, is it because we are so far away. Today, we have to worry about deception and somebody stealing from me and so on. Here, it is the opposite. Here, you have to worry that the person is giving you too much. Subhanallah. Rasulullah Sallam said, they will not steal your reward. As long as you are grateful and you make dua for them, Allah will also give you reward. <clears throat> yeah. See how the uh, how the uh, you know the, how, how the, the uh, this brotherhood of faith worked, and this is the reason why it worked so well because people considered and they put themselves uh, they put their 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 uh, 
the, the brothers in faith ahead of themselves. <coughs> right? they, they put their brothers of faith ahead of themselves. And that is why this whole thing worked uh, so well and so beautifully. It, it could not have worked so beautifully uh, without this <coughs> <coughs> without this whole uh, you know thing being so uh, without these people having that uh, kind of faith and having that kind of uh, love for one another, which was not just you know verbal. They, they, they didn't just talk about uh, you know brother so and so, brother so and so. They actually treated each other as brothers and as I said in our present current day context they treated each other better than you would treat your own brother. This brotherhood of faith had even the rules of inheritance like in the case of blood relationship. So when the uh, when one of them died the other one inherited from him like a or like his own blood brother would have inherited. You now they took it to that extent. So when it's a brother, it was a brother in every single sense of the term. This continued until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> revealed Walladina Amanu Mim Badu wa Hajaru wa Jahadu Maakum Fa Ulaika Minkum Ba Ulul Arhami Baduhum Aula bi Badin fi kitabi lahi in Allah bi kulli shayin alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and those who believed afterwards and emigrated and strove hard and worked hard in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you, they are of you. They are your brothers. They are from you. They are of you. But kindred by blood, relationships of blood are nearer to one another regarding inheritance in the decree ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, Allah is the all knower of everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah is very pleased with the way that the uh, people, alhamdulillah, that they have, um, that they are treating one another and so on. But <clears throat> as far as the relationships are concerned, uh, the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are clear and those rules will apply. And that is that your, your brothers and sisters of uh, of your blood have uh, the have the uh, the right to inherit from you, uh, whereas these brother, brothers and sisters of faith they will not inherit, but they continue to be your brothers and sisters of in faith, and they continue to be people who you love and so on. You know this is the beauty of Islam, where Islam takes into consideration also. Some very basic fundamental um, uh, principles and rules of life, which is that when it comes to money uh, and if you are going to uh, treat people, no matter how uh, you know noble your intention, if you are going to treat people in a way that other people feel uh, is unjust on them, then that is not something which will last over time. So if somebody, uh, the children of other, the blood relationships of a person, uh, the children of the person, the brothers and sisters of the person, the parents of the person, so on, uh, if you are going to give them uh, less or if you are not going to give them precedence over uh, the others, over the blood, uh, over the, the, the uh, affiliation, of, I'm, I'm, I'm using a term just like that. Uh, to, to differentiate the affiliative brotherhood of uh, faith, then the people who are blood relations will feel uh, that they have been uh, you know, unjust or dealt with unjustly. Now, um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, that there is no need. Alhamdulillah, your, uh, your, your beliefs and your, uh, the reasons why you are doing something, this is accepted and this is appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be rewarded but as far as blood relationships are concerned for inheritance this is something that will remain the the brother of faith will not inherit from his uh, brother the political uh, situation in Medina as I mentioned to you was very complex with uh, several communities with different political ties uh, as I told you there were three major tribes of the Jews and there were two major tribes of the Arabs and uh, they also had their own 
uh, interrelationships between them. For example, the Khazraj were uh, closely related with the uh, Banu Nadir, uh, tribe of the Jews and so on. Uh, they used to trade with each other. It was a very pluralistic, uh, multi-religious, multicultural society. And uh, that is what uh, we, we need to also keep in mind because we think that this is some you know, uniquely uh, unique place where there was, there was no, uh, no one other than Muslims and all of these Muslims were 100% <clears throat> the most pious people going. Of course, they were pious, but there were a lot more people than the Muslims alone. Um, Rasulullah in this uh, very complex uh, situation was building a new nation based on faith which was a new bond as I mentioned to you and went against the grain of their traditional bonds. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealing ayat to declare the need to break the old relationships and form new relationships uh, 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 new uh, based on Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattaqidhu aba'akum wa ikhwanakum awliyaa anistahabbu al-kufra ala al-eeman wa man yatawallahum minkum faulaika humu al-zalimoon Qul in kana aba'akum wa abna'akum wa ikhwanakum wa azwajukum wa ashiratukum وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين الله سيد أو يبليب do not take for awliya. Now this is another uh, important word to understand in Arabic. The, the wali is not just a friend. The wali is a confidant, is a supporter, is a, uh, you know, is, is, is a person who's an advisor, is a person who knows everything about you that there is to know. Uh, a wali is a, is a lot more than friend, right? So it's a very close relationship very close friendship and that is which is based on faith in this case so Allah is saying oh you believe do not take for awliya your fathers and your brothers if they prefer disbelief to belief so Allah is forming a basis of a level of friendship it's okay to have acquaintances it is okay to have friends but when it comes to the level of friendship where you where this is a friend who knows everything about you he has access to everything in your in your home, uh, he is like another member of your family. And this is the person you go to if you need advice, if you need consolation, if you need anything, uh, and so on and so forth. This person has, he knows all your secrets. If that is the kind of friendship, that level is bent only for believers. Allah is saying, if you're, even if your father and, and brother, now look at this, if you're not even talking about you know, an, an outsider, don't make him that close a friend if that person is not a believer. He's saying even if it is your own father and your own brother, uh, meaning, of course, your mother, sister also. If that person is not a believer, by all means, be good to them, be nice to them, be kind to them, <clears throat> you know, be friendly to them and so on. But do not disclose everything in your heart to them. Don't make them close confidence, don't take their advice because their advice is going to be based on principles which are not Islamic because they are not Muslim. So Allah is saying, oh you believe, do not take for awliya, do not take for awliya, your fathers, your brothers, if they prefer disbelief over belief and whoever does that, then he is one of the wrongdoers. He is somebody who is the zalimun, he is somebody who is the, uh, who is a wrongdoer. And then Allah said, say, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your kindred, again, this is not gender specific. So father means father and mother, brother, sons means sons and daughters, it means children, your brothers means siblings, brothers and sisters, wives means spouses, wives and husbands. Um, say if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your kindred, means your extended family, the wealth that you have gained, the commerce in which you fear a decline and the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you 
are dearer to you. Listen to this one. Are dearer to you if you love them more than you love Allah and His Messenger Wasallam. Then you love Allah and His Messenger if they are dearer to you than Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and striving hard and fighting in His cause. Then wait until Allah brings about His decision of torment. And Allah does not guide those who are uh, al-fasiqoon, those who are rebellious and disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See this ayah, it is so um, powerful, it is so uh, frightening because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting the, uh, the trend here of, uh, you know, of what is uh, acceptable and what is not acceptable uh, with him with regard to how we, uh, what we do, who we deal with and, and what we should do and we should not do. Inshallah, more about this in the next class. I don't want to hurry through this. This is a very important ayat for us to understand. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts to his deen, to learning and to uh, practicing in our lives. Wa sallallahu ala nabi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika 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 rahmat